Okay, let's let's do a fiber qualification with BERT test on the XG2 units. This is an XG2 plus kit, meaning I have two XG2 units and they are licensed for 10 gig each. I'm gonna test some single mode fiber. I'm gonna do the cable setup uh, for the fiber. I'm gonna set a reference and then I'm actually gonna test some fiber. Let me step over and do that now. Okay, as mentioned, I've got two units in hand. Okay, so um, here they are. These are XG2 units. We've got two SFP bays here at the top on both the units. Both the units are licensed to 10 gig. So there's no problems there. I'm sharing screen for both of the testers over on the left side. So you actually can see the actual screen details of both of these units when we go through the testing procedure. As far as additional items, I have two uh, SFPs on hand. These are single mode SFPs. We'll look at the details in a moment and I'll show you how to check all that. There are also 10 gig SFPs. My intent is to be able to test 10 gig. The fiber, the fiber that we're testing is here. So this spool right here, I don't know, looks to be about 100 feet of fiber, maybe 70 feet of fiber. I don't know. We'll find out how long it is in a moment. Um, it's a duplex pair and it's terminated in LC. It's OS2, by the way. Um, I have two um, of the reference cords that come in the plus kit. Okay, these are just single mode LCs They're here. And I have a couple couplers to be able to mate the fibers together for the testing. Also, I have uh, US, our USB inspection scope as an accessory to be able to inspect in faces as well. So the first thing I like to do when I'm doing testing, again, this is kind of my, my preference on how to do testing. I think, it, I think it's the best way, but maybe I'm biased. Um, I like to check exactly what my SFPs are doing. So I'll go ahead and just plug these SFPs into a bay and I'm just gonna choose one. I'm gonna choose SFP bay one. And then I'm going to verify their hardware. And I'm going to do that by going into settings. I'm going to choose the more options until I see HW config or, or uh, hardware in the top left. And when I go to that screen, you can see I can see the SFP details. Let's go do that on the other unit as well. Okay, so that I can see down there at the bottom, SFP number one. So I have similar SFPs. These, these should be compatible together. What I'm looking for here is I want to make sure that the SFPs are being recognized, number one, by the tester. I want to make sure that they're, in this case, both single mode, they're both 10 gig, and I can see that at the bottom. You can see the wavelength, 1310, which is a single mode wavelength. And I'm sorry, this is, I was wrong. This is a one gig SFP. So I'm glad I did this. I thought I was gonna be testing to one 10 gig. I'm not, I'm gonna be testing to one gig. That is, that is the SFPs that I have on hand. Now I could test a 10 gig if I had 10 gig SFPs, but in this case, I'm only gonna be testing to one gig and that's fine. Um, the testers are licensed to 10 gig, okay? I also see the SFP port selection. SFP one is one gig, SFP two is 10 gig. So that's both selected the same on the testers and that lines up with the type of testing I'm gonna be doing. On the XG2, the SFP bays are um, assignable. I can assign them for different tasks. In other words, I can work with multi-mode in one bay or single mode in the other or one gig in one bay or 10 gig in the other bay. It just depends on how you want to do that. You can run multiple setups, okay? So my SFP should be good to go. Let's go and do the actual cable setup. This unit for this testing, I'm gonna make this one be my remote unit. You're gonna see that in a moment. So let's just go home on this tester. Um, and on this unit, I'm actually gonna do my 
cable setup. So this one is going to be my local. So let's go into the cable test section. And I've got a project that I'm working with. That's fine. Let's go into cable test. You notice there's some preset cable types in here. There's also in this tester some custom stuff that I've done, and that's all perfectly normal. Okay. Um, I want to um, I want to set up a brand new one uh, from scratch. So the best way that I that I like to do it is I like to grab one that's kind of similar and edit it. So let's just grab this OS one at one gig. Okay. That's selected right now. And I'm just gonna make a copy of it by hitting the plus sign in the bottom left. Okay. So now that's there. Now let's 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 make an let's make edits to this type. So we're doing a custom type. So we're gonna call this OS2. And I'm gonna give this a name. And um, let's call it. The OS2 or Smith library. Okay, so now I have a defined cable type or I'm about to have a defined cable type for this testing. I've chosen the speed as one gig. It was actually set there already. It's set to SFP1. The type is OS1, OS1, OS, OS2. So it's OS2 and then there's so that's the matching the type and it is nine, nine microns. So I agree with everything here. I'm good with this, this type. So I'm gonna apply these changes to the cable type I just made. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it as a current type, set as a current type, okay? In other words, I want to tell the tester that this is the cable type I wanna be using for my testing, okay? Out of all the cable types that I have here. So use these two buttons here at the bottom of the screen to be able to drive those choices, okay? So I have a brand new cable type set up, um, almost ready to do testing. Let's go into, uh, if you wanted to build a cable label, you could. Um, you can see there's lots of cable labels in here. I'm going to uh, skip that section and go directly into the cable test. Let's just hit the plus sign. So there's a, a, a brand new cable label. Um, it's actually built from previous testing. Okay, so it's a blank test and you can see it's set up for OS2. Okay, nothing's been tested yet. Okay, um, so now I'm ready to test. Well, almost, I still need to do a set reference. Okay, and I need to do a set reference because I haven't tested with this cable type before. I just created this cable type from scratch. Okay. So you'll need to do a set reference initially with this cable type. And then once it's done, you shouldn't have to do it again. So let's click on set reference and let's follow these instructions for setting reference. So I'm gonna grab my cords. And since we're on video, I am gonna kind of skip some steps here. The steps I'm gonna skip are, I'm not gonna do all of the cleaning and inspection that, that you typically should. So I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of break kind of rules here, but trust me, in most situations you do want to do a full cleaning and inspection of your cables. It's the wise thing to do. You don't have the um, freedom of going back and hitting the edit button in real life. So I'm gonna connect these pairs on the tester with a coupler in between, just as shown in the diagram. Okay, now that they're connected in between, I need to take the remote unit on this side and then it needs to go in remote mode. So if you notice on the screen at the bottom, that's next to the net expert logo, there is a button that says remote. Simply click that 
and it gives you a couple op options. It says, um, well, mine, mine says, please check SFP module. The reason I set that is because it was on the wrong setting. I want to go to a 1G option instead of a 10G. Okay. And then it says SFP to act. Well, it figured it out. It changed it to SF SF SFP1. So I hope you notice that. You may have to manually change that. Okay. Mine figured it out and made SFP1 active. Okay. Remember, I was plugged into one bay one over here and bay one over here. And I want to make that, I want to set that up. Okay. So this is now in the proper settings on the remote side. You shouldn't have to do anything else on the remote side for testing. Go back over here to the local unit. Now that I've followed all these, you can see the cable type is at the bottom. I'm just going to choose set reference. And now it's setting reference. So beautiful thing about this, I don't have to worry about a loss budget. I don't have to worry about choosing one jumper versus two jumper versus three jumper. I don't have to worry about all those kind of details. It's really kind of, uh, it's very simple as far as a fiber optic set reference is concerned. And I'm done. That's it. The set reference is complete. You can see up there in that top screen. It's now telling you to go test. So let's go back to that blank cable test that we had. I'm going to click on cable test. And there it is. Now, I'm going to add the fiber that we want to test. So this is the big spool that we saw earlier. I'm just going to drop this down in front of us. Okay. And I'm going to add that in the fiber, in between the fiber reference cords to be able to link up. Now, I told you I've been skipping over the cleaning and inspection steps. Okay. And keep that in mind. So I'm crossing my fingers that I'm not going to have a dirty fiber or an issue with anything here. But again, we're just doing that for the video. Okay. So now I'm set up on the fiber to test. I have a button over here selected for loss and length. You see that? That is checked. Okay. If you don't have it checked, you're not going to get loss in length. Okay, so have it checked if you want it. Mine was already checked. I'm there. So now I'm ready to test. I'm just going to hit the test button. The remote over here is still in remote mode. It's just waiting. Okay, so there's nothing new that needs to be checked or, or selected on that side. Okay. And we're linking up. and we're testing, okay? Now we've got to run a full BERT test on this, whether it's for one gig or 10 gig testing. So it's going to take, it's going to take a few seconds for us to go through this BERT because we're going to have to run uh, several million bits of data on both fiber one and fiber two and then count them as successfully sent, okay? Now, remember what we're testing here. This is the one of, another big benefit of testing with an XG2. I'm testing the entire link for, for full bandwidth performance, whether it's one gig or 10 gig. So when I say the entire link, I'm saying the fiber that we're, that's laying here in front of us, whether it's installed or on a desktop, that's being tested for one gig or 10 gig speeds. The couplers, the patch cords, and also the SFPs. The SFPs are a big deal. I'm testing the SFPs for full, full bandwidth performance. And that's, that's important. This entire, this entire link is now tested for one gig. Now we have a passing result. You can see the details of that BERT test. So I can see that I have uh, 2.8 or 2, 2,883,720 passing packets with zero drop packets, zero errors, zero BERT errors on fiber one and the same for fiber two, okay? So that's a, a good one gig link. 
that's from SFP to SFP, both directions, right? Okay. Also on the remote unit, you can see even the serial number and the model number of the SFPs, okay? If I click on the loss and links tab, I can actually see loss in DB calculated. I can see the length of the fiber calculated and then the limit which uh, to IEEE standards for both of those and a margin, okay? So that is a test. There's one more thing I wanted to show you. So we do also have the ability to do in-face photos. So we tested this and I kind of ran through it a little faster than I would if I was actually in the field just for the sake of getting it on film. I'm gonna go back and show you one more thing that you can do. So this is our USB inspection scope. I can plug that in and you can do an in-face inspection. So let's click on microscope. It gives you an array here of the various in-faces. Let's take a look at fiber 1A. So there it is, pretty pretty nasty looking fiber, but the the core is not that bad. Outside, there's a pretty big boulder there. So that's what I get for not not doing a full cleaning and inspection. I, I there was loss, a pretty good amount of loss associated with that fiber. So that that dirty in face definitely is contributing to it. I'm lucky that it's not there in the core, otherwise it could have been a lot worse. But I can actually snap that photo. Let's get that recorded. Get that in. So that's a 400x magnification of that in face. Let's just save that. And let's take a look at the another end face. So I'm gonna to go to the opposite end here. This one looks much better. Still a little dirty. Let's take a photo of that one as well. And let's save that. So I could do that for all four in faces if I wanted to. You can see there are the two in faces that both happen to be fails. Um, the, the tester is grading that out, scope and the tester, I should say combined, are grading that out to an IEC 61, uh, 335, 325, I, I forgot the exact number, but it's an IEC standard for in face cleanliness. And that goes in your test report as well. It's an option there for each result. So if I go back to my main screen, you can see I passed on the BERT, which is by far the most important aspect. I actually passed on loss and length values, and then I failed on my scope in face images. All of that can will be in the result, including also, I should say, the SFP information that you see on the remote unit with the wavelength, serial number, and SFP type the opposite side. That's a great test report for a link. Gives you full understanding of what's going on with that fiber fiber link and uh, a great summary of network success using that fiber.